Now hi, this is my real-time strategy engine that I've developed within Unity. Uh, this was part of my final year project at university. Um, I say once uh, once my project's been marked as well, I'll uh, I'll be releasing the source code and I'll also be doing a few more tutorials about how to manipulate different elements and you know how to use the engine for your own type of RTS game. Uh, so yeah, I'll just start off showing you some of the basics. Um, so I'll be showing you the user interface and a bit of pathfinding. So you got your mobile construction vehicle here. You can see here the shroud. Uh, I'm not too keen on the shroud though. I think I'd, uh, if I had a chance to redevelop this, I'd go for um, more of a fog of war system. So all the terrain's visible, but you can only see the enemy units if uh, if one of your units is in within range. Uh, so so here you got your on the right hand side. You got all your buildings. Uh, for, yeah, for those that have played uh, Red Alert, I'm sure you'll uh, be able to recognise where I got a lot of this inspiration from. Uh, yeah, so we've got our refinery and harvesters resource collection. You know that. Uh, our war factory, so we can now start to build vehicles. Our radar, as you can see here, we got now have our radar. I'm sure I'll just cancel that. Build uh, my iPad. Um, again, I've gone for uh, I've gone for systems as well. So, say I was to build two barracks, I've run out of power there as well, which is why the radar's gone. Uh, so, if I build two barracks, you see here I get two build queues rather than just building one of the units faster. Um, I know a, a lot of these models are mine. I know it's Master Chief, for example, but I'm a programmer. I'm not a 3D modeler. Um, if anyone is thinking about doing a real-time strategy engine I'd, uh, or using this, I have to say the biggest problem is by far the content creation. I had no idea just how much there was <laughs> to do. Uh, yeah, that, prob that probably was my biggest challenge. Um, so you can see here a lot of the unit behavior. Uh, so I say the user interface, it's similar to Command & Conquer series. You can drag, select to load, right click to go wherever or attack. Uh, so I say here, I've only got at the moment like simple tanks. I've got that tank as well. Uh, you can build harvesters, you can also build V3 rockets, I've called them. Uh, got engineers as well. I'll, if I pause it, I can show you the engineers. Uh, if I just add in a enemy construction yard, and then pause it. Yeah. So if I go send my engineer into this enemy construction yard. Uh, I will then I'll get all the build queues of the enemy. So it's here another another building menu should appear once it's taken over. Yeah, it's taken over. So yeah, so we can now begin to build the enemy buildings. Hmm, stuff like that. Uh, I'd say it was only a prototype, so a lot of it was unfinished. Like mainly the content creation, to be honest. Because uh, I'm not too good at it. Uh, I don't really enjoy it. Um, all right, so. That's that part of it. I'll uh, I'll show you a bit of the artificial intelligence now. And possibly we'll get rid of the shroud to show you how all that works. Yeah, so you can see here, this is how the artificial intelligence is working. Um, at the at the moment I've just set it to build everything really quickly and everything's quite cheap as well uh, just to show off the different features uh, but it's incredibly easy to manipulate all these variables uh, you know so like the price and uh, the time it takes to build stuff it's all very easy to do all very easy to edit uh, so cause my original intention was to uh, have an artificial neural network uh, like check on all these variables and manipulate them uh, so that way yeah, every time the AI could adapt to the player's playing style, so it's just less repetitive, it's less predictable, uh, which was what I wanted. But say it was only a prototype, so I never actually got around to uh, implementing the artificial neural network. Uh, so you see here, there's the different types. Uh, so these units here, these are these are part of um, the defensive groups. I say that I've got a main AI, and then this main AI controls small and medium level AIs. So all these different groups are controlled by their own medium level AI. So you've got your patrol group here. So you've got defensive. One of these is attacking. So you see if I press, I've said it so if I press T it'll make another unit. 
Uh, so you can see here, once the attacking group hits the required number, they will then proceed to attack. Um, if I send, if I send one, of I'll send a couple of my units in. And you can see, once they get close enough as well, the artificial intelligence should go to attack them. Yeah, so you can see here, one of them's entered, so one group's been dispatched. When this other group enters, another group will get dispatched. Um, if, I sit, if I just move these in closer, you'll be able to see some of the lasers and Tesla coils in action. You can see there. Yeah, that's how all that works. I'll show you some of the other behaviour as well. I'll show you the air, the air vehicle behaviour. Yeah, so you can also sell and fix buildings. That's all being implemented. Uh, yeah, pause as well, building um, and cancel, just with the right click. I'll build my airfields. Build a couple of. Vehicles. Uh, you can also group units. So there, I've set these to group one. Uh, now another feature of the artificial intelligence here. So if I go attack their refinery, uh, you'll be able to see the enemy SAM sites working. Here you can see there. Uh, so yeah, I've destroyed that refinery. The artificial intelligence will automatically detect that, and then it will go to build another one. Uh, and, it's the, and it's the same with the units as well, so if I set these to go attack a harvester, it automatically... The artificial intelligence again should automatically detect that. Let's see here, it's, the planes are coming in. I don't know if we're going to destroy this actually. <laughs> oh no, it's still alive. Uh, but yeah, if you destroyed the harvester, it would automatically create another one. Uh, so I'll show you some of these uh, variables, how you can manipulate the artificial intelligence. So I wanted it, I wanted a lot of this to be as automatic as possible. So when creating levels, you know, if you if you um, if you put in enemy buildings, if you design your own enemy base, the artificial intelligence might detect that. You know, so if I build a war factory as part of the level design, it won't build one automatically. Uh, so there's a few other things. So, so there, like I had, um, like the the build placement. I've got two. I've got expand and close. You see, if I set it to close, it'll be uh, it'll build all the buildings within a lot tighter area. Now, say so this is for. Cause I say I wanted the artificial, uh, the artificial neural network. It was uh, intentionally it was going to do some terrain analysis at first, so it could decide, you know, what to, you know, if it was in a compact space, then it build compact. So you can see here, it's building all these buildings a lot closer together. The refineries work a bit differently. That will try and find the closest area it can to. Uh, to um or rather than do that, and do that. Yeah, so I'll show you. I'll show you now. So if I place a enemy war factory, so I'll just place it there. You can see here, it'll automatically detect that, and then so hopefully now it won't build a war factory. Uh, so it should just go straight to building the radar now. Yep, there we go. Yeah, it's built the radar, and that's so. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of it is automatic. Um, I say like the pathfinding as well. Uh, how I design, I wanted that to be as automatic as possible. Let's, uh, just let me get rid of this war factory. Yeah, so my pathfinding, yeah, it all works. It's using the air star algorithm. And it all works on the grid. Uh, my actual grid script you can't see, so I've created this grid edit script. Uh, so you can see here, so the white tiles represent open ones that you can travel across, the red ones are blocked. Uh, but it's all automatic, so you see if I start building a hill, you see once the slope becomes too high, it'll automatically set the uh, tiles to blocked. Um, you can control all the different parameters here, so there's a slope angle, so if I set that to zero, you know, it's, it's a slight slope at all, it won't build them. Uh, if you set it to ten, it has to be a big slope for it. Uh, there's other things like water level as well, so like easy water level. 
So anything anything below this level will get set to blocks if you ever set that to four. And you can see a few more tiles become unblocked. Uh, so that's how the pathfinding works. Because um, when I first made this project, uh, Unity 4 wasn't out, and the pathfinding in Unity 3.5 didn't have any dynamic obstacle avoidance, which is what I really needed. Uh, but now Unity 4 is out. I know Unity 4 has that option, so I'd, if I was going to remake it, I'd probably use that, to be honest. I quite like the pathfinding in Unity. I think it's quite smooth, and it's, you get a nice effect. Yeah, so that is my real-time strategy engine. As I say, once it's been graded, I'll uh, I'll release the source code, and I'll also you know do some tutorials. I say about how to properly manipulate all these different elements. And all that. Well, thanks for watching.